Hey everyone, welcome to Locked on Lakers for Monday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. The Lakers are back to their losing ways. They drop a game to Cleveland, 114 to 100 on Sunday. A lot to unpack. We'll do it next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked on Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, no matter how or where you get your podcasts. Always free, never behind a paywall. Please make another Locked on Podcast your second listen of every day, but only, of course, after making us your first. Um, Locked on Lakers on YouTube is where you go to uh, get the channel, uh, get the show a little bit early, uh, whether it's an afternoon game, as it was on Sunday, or uh, on non-game days, you tend to see the product a little bit earlier than just waiting for the audio. We appreciate everybody's support there with the Locked on Lakers YouTube channel. Um, Andy, <clears throat> it seemed a few days ago that there was a sense of optimism creeping in with this Lakers bunch that maybe, just maybe, after the Lakers won two in a row, it was getting better, a glint of hope. This weekend was not good for that. This weekend was very bad for that. And Sunday, uh, 114 to 100 lost Cleveland at the crypt. Uh, the latest example. Yeah, they're just the offensive woes that the Lakers have dealt with all season that it felt like either they were turning a corner offensively or had found just enough balance, you know, in, in a lot of ways boosted by Russ coming off the bench and really galvanizing that unit and kind of de decluttering uh, the lack of fit between him and LeBron in the starting unit. They, they've just, they've regressed in a lot of ways. And I we'll, we'll talk about this. I think against Utah and then especially against Cleveland without Patrick Beverly, who was sick for this game, there, there's been a flu, bu uh, flu bug or some type of bug that's been going around the team, LeBron's dealt with it. AD's dealt with it. I think JTA has dealt with it. But Patrick Beverly couldn't play in this game. He's not traveling with the team to Utah. But against a team like Cleveland that is so backcourt dynamic and Kendrick Nunn got the start in place of Patrick Beverly and, to put it mildly, did nothing to make his case for getting back into the rotation Uh he, this was not a carpe diem moment for Kendrick Nunn. You started seeing how there's this pressure on them defensively that I think is starting, we'll talk about this, is starting to weigh on them in the face of just not having a consistent, reliable offense. I agree with you. Like, And it was particularly striking in the first half, like where you look through the, the stats and you know the Lakers weren't shooting the ball well from three. But neither was Cleveland, and the Lakers had more field goals, and the turnovers were reasonably under control, or whatever. And you, you know, the, you, to, uh, on Sunday, it was the free throws. I'm like, you know, Mitchell and and Garland basically lived at the line. Mitchell shot 13 free throws. Garland shot seven. Um, you know, and Jared Allen got there six times. The Lakers, you know because the offense is so inconsistent because they can't shoot threes and they struggle to get to the line all that, Sunday, they lost at the free throw line. Like that was the, the difference in the game. And, you know, because the Lakers were 12 of 20, I'm sorry, eight of 27 from three. And that's not good, but the Cavs were eight of 32. So the Lakers were actually tied in terms of three points, three you know points generated by three pointers. The Lakers had 40 field goals to Cleveland's 37. The difference, like I said, Cleveland got to the line 36 times. They made 32, so they were plus 15 in free throw attempts, and they were a staggering plus 20 in free throw conversions. And I, I, I mentioned that last part because it gets to what you're talking about. The offense has such a small margin for error that if you take away you know, one category... It, they had to compensate somewhere else. They didn't compensate with three-point shooting on Sunday, and they certainly didn't compensate with making their free throws when they had a chance. And the result is Cleveland runs away in ways that the Lakers can't compete with. And 
I, I, I you saw Andy like LeBron, you know, there were, there was, I think some palpable frustration from LeBron after the game um, about, th- about the way the offense is operating. There was, I think, frustration from Darvin Ham um, about how the Lakers are reacting to the, you know, the third quarter, for example, when they only scored 16 points, that their inability to put up points is beginning to weigh on them. That is hurting them defensively. Um, I don't unfortunately see a lot of easy solutions to this problem. You know, Darvin talked about guys afterwards, you know, they, their heads start to hang a bit when the shots aren't going down. He said that the spirit left the team in the second half. And the problem for this team is the shots don't go down a lot, which means they really have to fight that urge a lot. They need a deep reservoir of spirit, Andy. Well, I mean, we're only in game nine. Like, and it feels like there is a tone being set for this team. I don't even necessarily mean in terms of losing their spirit. I mean, a tone being set of this is what we are going to have to fight through every damn game. And by the way, we're already five games below 500, nine games in. Right. Going, going into a game on Monday on the second night of a back-to-back against a Utah team that continues to play very well. And so, you know, I, you could see it too. Like some of it is spirit, but some of it, you know, and we're, we're going to talk about Anthony Davis and LeBron and Russ and the inability through these seven games to figure out a way to get everybody kind of working at the same time. Like it seems like Anthony Davis starts really strong Fades in the fourth quarter. No fourth quarter points on Sunday, correct? I, I'm not missing something. Oh, we, we'll go deeper into that. Not only are you correct, it it goes much more broad than this game alone. But oh yes. no, right. And this was this goes, this is a problem going back to last season. The inability of Anthony Davis to be a big part of the offense right, in the fourth but, quarter. But this what no, it's we're really about bad. to get into. You know, LeBron, LeBron this is um, stark has has started games horribly and sometimes picks it up and finishes well you know there's an in i don't i don't mean to pin this on russ because there's a there is a limit i say as i think to what you can expect from russ throughout a game and his second half statistically wasn't great on sunday he did got very little help from gen you know people who could have generated more assists for him but the production in terms of counting stats was front loaded on sunday but there's also and you know, again, so, we'll so is all- pretty much other than LeBron, so is everybody's. Correct. We'll get into all of this stuff, but there's also there is a mechanical thing going on here, and you saw it particularly in the second half against Cleveland. The Cavs just nobody has any interest in moving out on the perimeter to give the Lakers spaced opera. So it's like, oh shoot, fine, we don't care. And the Lakers, to their credit, are not trying to get jumper happy they're going to be like no we're going to get aggressive we're going to try to drive the ball to the basket except you're driving into walls you're driving into compact defenses and they're and you're you know you're sort of forced to play one-on-one because there's no room to cut and do anything in on the interior and it, it, even those things don't even when they have the right instinct to not just okay fine we're going to fire threes fire threes fire threes it still doesn't work because defenses know they can't hit them and so until they can hit the threes or at least long jump, none of this is going to work. I don't see how anything changes. Yeah. They have to get themselves up to just a competent outside shooting team. Earlier in the season, even when the outside shots weren't falling, they were executing good looks for these shots that weren't yeah. falling. So just getting themselves up to a steady 34% from behind the arc reliably like without something fluky, like this game, they shot 30% rounding up. The guy with the most threes on this team was Russ. He had three of them. Fluky. Yeah. <laughs> right. I Exactly. Like it is not a sustainable formula to have Russell Westbrook leading your outside shooting charge. Like no. I, I'm not, and Russ, Russ has been good lately from outside. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to disparage what he's been doing. I'm just saying that's not a reliable formula for success and you can't play Matt Ryan 30 minutes a game because he will get eaten alive defensively and frankly can't do anything else other than hit outside shots. Correct. He can't he's he's not he's a one-dimensional player. Right. And it's a, it's an important dimension, yes. but it's a, he's yes. one-dimensional. Uh, so let's he's, let's he's talk helpful. about it. He should be in the rotation, but yeah. 
let's talk about AD. Um, and we'll go there first. We'll talk about AD. We can talk about LeBron. Uh, but this AD thing is stark because the, for the Lakers to win, we've talked about it from the summer on. There's two stars that are, you know that we that we everybody still puts in that category. LeBron and AD have to be nails every night, and that means all four quarters. And it's not happening right now for Anthony Davis. We'll do that next. Okay, locked on Lakers listeners. Have you signed up yet for prize picks? If you have not, get on it because this is Daily Fantasy Made Easy. They have the best NBA DFS prop game on the market. Prize picks offers more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator. They offer all the superstar players as well as bench players that only get you know a few minutes per game. Pick two to five players. Predict whether they'll have more or less in their prize picks projections. Lately, if you pick any of the Lakers supporting players, uh, pick less. Le- less would be the call right now. And prize picks, you want to talk about having you covered no matter what sport you're into. They offer projections for NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. You can use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play entries. 60 seconds or less. It's really easy, fast, safe withdrawal. So download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com, sign up, play daily fantasy sports. First-time users get a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks using the promo code Locked On. So if you deposit 100 bucks, PrizePix gives you 100 bucks. 50? 50 bucks. You can figure out the math from here. It's not complicated. But again, use the promo code Locked On at sign up for the instant match. If you're not playing prize picks, you do not know what you're missing. Okay, Andy. No fourth quarter points for Anthony Davis on Sunday. It has been a long trend throughout this season and going back into last season that Davis starts really strong. The Lakers obviously work hard to get him um, activated and engaged early, dominating early. His first quarters are typically his best. Um, this may be related a little bit to what, Le- you know, LeBron's inability to kind of get things going early in games, but th- this cannot happen. You cannot have Anthony Davis scoring no points in the fourth quarter and expect to win. Okay, Brian, let me throw out some stats that I saw on Spectrum Sportsnet, the Access Lakers show that they run after the games. Uh, Brian and I, by the way, uh, appear semi-regularly on Spectrum Sportsnet's Lakers coverage. Uh, You mentioned Anthony Davis had zero points in the fourth quarter in this game. The last three games, the the loss against Cleveland, loss against the Jazz, win against the Pelicans, those three games combined, how many fourth quarter points do you think Anthony Davis has scored? Nine. Lower. Six. Lower. Four. Lower. Whoa. (laughs) Two. Lower. None? Zero. He has zero points in the fourth quarter of the last three games combined. Let's, let's Brian, let's, you know, goose this out a little further. (laughs) Last three games combined. How many field goal attempts do you think Anthony Davis has? Last three games combined. Uh, Five. Lower. Four. Lower. (laughs) Three. Bing, ding, 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 ding. Two against the Pelicans, one against the Jazz. Zero field goal attempts in the fourth quarter in this loss against Cleveland. Granted, there was some garbage time. Uh, Darvin waved the white flag early on, not so maybe that's... that much garbage time. Not that much garbage time, yeah. Zero. Zero point zero. No grade point average. Like, that is... <laughs> I mean, you had mentioned before that this was somewhat of a thing for AD last season. It wasn't this. No, like, it wasn't this. zero. It wasn't this. 0.0 for three games. Right. And uh, in what is perhaps not um, an unrelated uh, thing, Anthony Davis opted not to speak with the media <laughs> after this game. And AD is pretty good about making himself available. Um. I wish I had any kind of real explanation for this. I mean, Darvin basically said after the game, like, look, 
AD has permission to uh, scream, you know, for the ball, like you know, to 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 make himself heard. Um, I, 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 do you have an explanation? Do you have a like a coherent like basketball related this? Because honestly, like, okay, fourth quarter production goes down. It's not even so much the man he didn't score three shots. Like, how do you um, explain three shots? Well, one thing I heard, uh, Derek Fisher, I think noted this, I want to say post game as well, that, and I think pregame in terms of talking about AD's uh, lack of fourth quarter involvement, which continued into this game, the Lakers have been playing from behind mm -hmm. in these games, which can make it difficult to slow things down, look for Anthony Davis that way. And if their defense, which was not nearly as sharp against Utah and certainly not in the second half against Utah. Cleveland, the opportunities to get out and run and hit AD in transition also fall. So in that sense, it starts becoming a little, I don't want to say uh, more understandable, but it becomes, I guess, more plausible why it's happening. I mean, you just, you take a look at the context of these games. Um, you know, teams, when you start becoming more desperate to play catch up, you take, you tend to put up quick shots. Um, quick shots typically don't end up with your center. Um, so that I, I think contextually there's an element to this, you know, there's also though that question of AD asserting himself for, four quarters on a consistent basis, which, you know, at his best has been something he's done, but at his worst is not a consistent uh, trade of his. Well, I, you know, in the third quarter, for example, on Sunday, part of their, the Lakers gave, the Lakers scored, and you, as you pointed out before we, we came on, the Lakers scored 36 points in the second half. They scored 36 points in the first quarter. Um, the 29 points that Cleveland scored in the third quarter, 27 in the fourth, which included some garbage time, but not that much. A lot of that is bad offense. Um, the, the, there were five or six possessions in the third quarter at least, probably a few more. It's just sort of kind of keeping a loose count where trash offense led to kind of unstoppable moments defensively for the Lakers. Um, where they just had no opportunity to set a defense to play any kind of coherent way. And like, so, I mean, it's, it's really important that people sort of, you know, the, Oh, they're not playing different. Like the, the inability to play offense hurts their defense. And if they can't generate points to your, to what, you know, what you were saying, uh, what maybe fish was getting at, if they can't generate any offense from their defense, that's also going to make it harder for them to get Anthony Davis involved. But I still don't think that, and I, I don't, I hate these, like, you know, there's no way LeBron isn't going to shoot in the fourth quarter. There's no way, you know, go back to other stars around the league. There's no way that, in, you know, from behind, you know, Donovan Mitchell on Cleveland's not going to shoot the ball. I understand we're talking about guards, wings versus centers. Anthony Davis needs someone to give him the ball. The compact paint makes it very difficult for to get space for him. Harder to run pick and rolls and all that kind of stuff. It's still, still something just fundamentally off about it. Well, I, you know, Darwin after the game said you know, something to the effect of, "Look, we've we've got an entire playbook with you know some sets that are devoted towards Anthony Davis. Like guys need to slow down. They need to reorganize and you know essentially." pull your heads out of your keisters and like figure out what you're <laughs> you doing. <said> keister. <laughs> yep. They know what they're supposed to be doing, or at least they should in Darwin's mind. I went and looked it up just to, you know, double check and make sure I didn't have this wrong. You know how many shots he took in the second half? Two. He finished that first half with, with 10 field goal attempts. He finished the game with 12. Now yeah. earlier in the season, there have been moments in the season where you're like, okay, I will give him the benefit of the doubt because he can clearly barely walk, um, let alone run, let alone shoot. Um, but like it, when they're not getting really great performances from LeBron and AD, the 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 focus that goes to the supporting cast is 
is tremendous. And, you know, we'll set Russ aside here because he's supposed to be somebody who puts up, you know, 15 to 20 a game at the very least. Um, you know, even by, you know, today's standards for Russ, like he, you, you still have to kind of pencil him in between 15 and 20 and hope he gets there. Lakers got 12 points from Troy Brown, but it took 12 shots, no free throw attempts. He did hit two of his five threes. He was the only other player in double figures. Kendrick Nunn gave you zero, zero. We've used this little little overlay far too many times in this show, 0.0. Kendrick Nunn you know, gave them literally nothing uh, from a point standpoint. Lonnie Walker, very quiet. He's been had some big games, but he wasn't big on Sunday. Very quiet six points. You got eight from Matt Ryan, a couple of those in garbage, I remember time, I believe. You know, Reeves gave you a point. Uh, JTA gave you two. They can't survive on that. Well, I mean, like, Darvin, after the game, uh, talked about how the supporting cast needs to do a better job, you know, supplementing, as he put it, the big dogs, talking about LeBron, AD, and Russ. And he mentioned... Uh, Austin and JTA and none by name. And and I'm guessing he probably meant everybody other than Troy Brown, like 12 points from Troy Brown, even if it was on 12 shots, that's a reasonable amount from Troy Brown, especially because okay, you know, he can't ask for more. Sure. Right. He's going to be taking a lot of outside though. shots. Um, one last thing though, that I thought was interesting on AD before we get to some stuff with LeBron. Well, yeah. Cause I want to stick on this thing about the, what Darwin said about the sporting cast for a second. Um, so yeah, finish up on AD. Russ was asked about, um, what he and like LeBron and some of the other ball handlers can do to get the AD the ball more. And like he noted, he wasn't taking this personally. Like it was a criticism of him. And he said, like he tries to make the right reads and tries to get the ball to Anthony Davis when he can. And to be fair, I think Russ does look for AD. And I think he often does try to, uh, you know, play a two man game with him. You know, he'll run pick and roll with him. He'll look to find him around the rim and you know, it reminded me a little bit. As much as it's a cliche talking about how you know big men needed to demand the ball, remember several years ago you can find this on YouTube. It was a preseason game where Andrew Bynum <laughs> Bynum's in the post, and Sasha is bleeping around <laughs> with the ball <laughs> around the arc, and. Bynum has got this great post position. He's got his arms up. He's doing everything he's supposed to. And finally, it picks up on the TNT mic. You hear Bynum go, give me the bleeping ball. <laughs> and they, Sasha ends up not giving him the bleeping ball. They they go into timeout. And everybody on the sideline is berating Sasha for not giving the not ball. not giving the bleeping just, ball. Right. And there are some times where it doesn't feel like AD channels his inner Andrew Bynum that no, specific they're the way moments, enough. As much as we love them, like we call the sort of like those pow moments where like he would be criticized for sort of floating through a game and not necessarily doing anything wrong, but it's just like, go be selfish. And he's not an innately selfish player. Right. Um, let's, let's do, um, I want to, we got to, at least we should try to talk about LeBron a little bit too, or Russ or something. But this point that Darwin made about the sporting cast is a fascinating one to me um, because I want to ask you a question. Is it fair for Darwin to say that these guys need to step up and, and, and produce? So I'll ask you that next. You may remember Andy, I, I posed a question to you. Um, when Darwin says these guys need to 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 step up and and produce a is that a fair thing to put on this batch of of supporting characters so to speak yes. on this roster? Yes. It it is fair to expect Austin Reeves to score more than one point. Mm-hmm. It is fair to expect Juan Toscano Anderson to score more than a basket. It is fair to expect Lonnie Walker to score more than six points. It is fair to expect Kendrick Nunn to score. Like, yes, that is fair. Like, Russell Westbrook outscored the rest of the bench combined, Mm -hmm. and I am and I am counting Max Christie's garbage bucket. I like he he outscored the rest of the bench, and Russ didn't even score twenty points. Like. So yes, Max I think that Christie's is- garbage bucket sounds like the worst restaurant you could ever possibly go to. 
<laughs> but <What> I mean, <laughs> special. <laughs> um, I yeah, agree with you. It's I, fair. I, it, it is fair. They're professional the basketball players. Right. It is fair in the micro. I, you know, like when you look at Saturday, Sunday's game, kind of by itself. I don't know if it's fair in the macro. Like when you look at how the Lakers are expected to survive, they've created a scenario in which you are expecting guys who have not been, you know, big time supporting players on on good teams to be big time supporting players on a team that wants to go somewhere. I, I, so that that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like this is a roster issue too. Like they need. Austin Reeves to be significantly better than you know he has been throughout his career, and Lonnie Walker to be significantly better, and Troy Brown to be significantly better. Because the difference is like Reeves has had a bunch of really nice games, but what what you're every one of these guys is sort of being expected to slot up to some degree to where they played over the course of their careers, which by the way is why they were available to the Lakers for like a million dollars. Um and and so while I think Darwin is correct, I think he is, and he's he's saying what needs to be said for the long-term prospects of this team. And this, I guess, points to, hey, go make the Buddy Heald deal. Although I guess Russ is playing well enough that it's not a fully addition by subtraction thing anymore. Like, they just don't have enough dudes. Um, and, and the expectations on these dudes is higher, perhaps, than it's fair to set them. I don't even, but I don't even know if I agree with that, to be honest, because I don't think Darvin is expecting Austin Reeves to go on a heater and put up 25. He's expecting him, though, to chip in seven. Like, and and frankly, the way Austin Reeves has been talked about, you know, and and the way people talk about him as a rotation player and, you know, somebody who should be closing. Like, if Kendrick Nunn is not scoring, I don't know what else you're going to be expecting from him. You know what I'm saying? Like Lonnie Walker is supposed to be mm-hmm. a scorer. Like, they, like I think what Darvin's talking about is do your job. Like do the thing you're actually expected to be doing. I don't think he's expecting anybody to play, you know, ab- above their station. I think he's saying go to your station. Like actually man your station, do your thing. Okay. Well, that, well, I mean, I mean, look, I'm not, here to defend Kendrick Nunn. I mean, zero, when you are Kendrick Nunn, yes, you are expected to do more and need to do more than what he did. Lonnie Walker, you know, I, I guess what I'm saying, like with somebody like Walker, for example, he's now in a position where it's like, you know what? We need 18, 19, 20 from you every day. And that is not something that Lonnie Walker has ever done. Um, you know, Kendrick Nunn, I have no idea what's going on there. Uh, but when you talk about Reeves, it's like, you know what, you know, the, the, the little stuff contribution is great. We need eight to 12 from you every day. And like all of these, so that's what I mean. I, I like, don't know if they necessarily need that but, much. But, okay, I mean, maybe it's not every day, whatever, but I, I think they've created a roster where they are more dependent on people to be better, you know, and then, and more consistently better than they've ever been in their entire careers. Well, and but you see, and I disagree with that. I it even more if Anthony Davis and LeBron James aren't dominant every night. I actually disagree with that because okay. if all of these guys that you're talking about with a supporting cast would just hit three pointers at their career unimpressive averages, a lot of this would be solved. I mean, like, it would help. a lot of these guys are underperforming, even by the standards of what you would expect. They're underperforming. Like, just, just put, break it down in terms of outside shooting alone. Most of these guys are underperforming what are not that high of standards to begin with. So in that sense, I mean, all of them, you could you could bump that bench scoring collectively together if they would just get to meh, if they would just get themselves to meh from three-point range. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't actually think Darvin's asking these guys to, I, mean, to I, I think I, I, role I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And I, I think there's a lot of, of credibility to it. I do think my broader point, though, is still true. Like, just, you know, you are asking of, of some guys on this team a, a consistent level of production that I think for a lot of them is is higher than it's been. And I we'll, we'll get to LeBron and, this, and Russ, I think, maybe, you know, for tomorrow's show, we'll see what happens in Utah. 
Um, and certainly for Wednesday, they have every, the entire league has the day off um, on Tuesday. So we can dive a little bit deeper into what's happening um, based on what happens in the Utah game. Um, but LeBron is going through some stuff, it seems. This was a game where uh, he, he was more efficient offensively. He finished 13-23. Right. And he... He noted after the game that uh, he's not getting referee love, nor does he expect to. Uh, he's said that last few years he's heard from a lot of officials, hey, miss that call, miss that call, but he doesn't expect it to ever correct itself. But he he was asked an interesting question from um, our friend Allie Clifton, who works over at Spectrum Sportsnet, used to cover LeBron in Cleveland about just you know how he goes about trying to, if at all, share some of the adversity that he's been through over the course of his career at, you know, while he's with this team right now, dealing with its own adversity. And LeBron said that, you know, every year it's its own challenge, but quote, I know what I can control, but I'm one guy. I control what I can control, but what I can't control, I don't worry about. And went on to say that, you know, he prepares himself mentally, physically, spiritually every night to go out, to go to battle, gives guys energy, tries to talk through mistakes, good and bad. You know, he can lean on things he's experienced himself, but they have it, and he's compared it to really trying to explain to his kids what life was like for him growing up in extreme poverty and extreme chaos. And his kids only know life with a private chef and nannies in a gated community with their father, you know, steadily approaching billionaire status. And they're going to look at him like he's got three heads, like they're just not going to understand this. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've noticed in our time covering LeBron is that when he gets into I can only control what I can control mode, that's LeBron speak for I'm getting pissed off by what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and to be fair to LeBron or to give him credit, he did say the team's been competing every night. Like, he, I don't he think, said, yeah, I don't think effort's the issue. And, you know, I think LeBron is probably savvy enough to recognize I have not been killing it enough just put these guys on blast but that is lebron speak for f if i know what to do man <laughs> like I, I don't i don't know what i can do with this that that gets i but i think that gets to my previous point which is you can't bleed a rock um ultimately that's what i'm getting at is you can't bleed a rock and i don't mean that these guys can't play better because they obviously can't i just mean that playing better versus sort of quasi expectations or you know the lakers expect to compete for at least a playoff spot or whatever the gap between playing better and what you would need from a supporting cast to get to there is is large and that's before you start to include anthony davis and lebron james aren't doing enough there's a whole mess of stuff to to uh, to, to to deal with this week we'll see what the lakers do um monday night in utah is the last, the every team in the NBA is playing on Monday night. The league will take off Tuesday, so everyone in the league can go vote. Uh, nobody who watches the NBA or follows the NBA will be distracted by NBA things. We can all go vote. I would encourage everybody to get out and do that themselves um, if you haven't already, and many people probably have. Um, but yeah, so the Lakers back on a two game losing streak after winning two in a row. A panic has <laughs> re entered Lakers Nation. Uh, it could be three in a row after the, the Monday game in Utah. Utah is um, still playing real well, and they spanked the Lakers in L.A. on Friday. So uh, we'll see what happens. See everybody on Tuesday.